Hi everyone, this is Ara Derdarian of the HT Guys. And on today's video, we go through the building of these beautiful speakers. They are using components from CSS Audio. They're the Crichton 2DX. And there's more information on the CSS Audio website. We have a link in the show description and you can follow that link and get all the information about it. But the main gist is that they have a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. They have a sensitivity of 90 dB and they measure 44 inches high by eight and a half inches wide by 10 and a half inches deep. And my incarnation of these weigh 36 pounds each. Also, if you want to skip the building portion of the video and go directly to the part where I play some music, uh, there are shortcuts in the description as well. And again, this is not a how-to video, although it does go through the steps of what it takes to build these from scratch. CSS also offers a flat pack so you can build your own set without woodworking tools. So I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe and on to the construction. This is the wood that I'll be using for Braden's speakers. It's reclaimed chestnut. I got it from this company here. Uh, they take down buildings in West Virginia and you can get a lot of reclaimed wood from them. Uh, here's their information. I bought a lot of wood from these guys and they were easy to work with, so I thought I'd give them a shout out on this video. And what I will do, I have 24 inch pieces. I'm going to take them and I'll, I'll make this all nice and flush and glue it together to get me the 44 inches that I'm gonna need. So this is 48, I'll end up trimming it down to 44 inches. And then, I'll take it and I'll rip it this direction. I'll do about an inch, maybe a little bit less. And then when I glue all the pieces together, I, I'll plane it down to three quarters of an inch. So this is what it looks like on its side. And, and the reason I do that is the boards are much stronger in this direction than they are in this direction. It'll be a little bit more rigid and that works better for speakers. And a good example of that here, I'll show you these. These are ones that I'm making, these are made out of reclaimed walnut and they will be used in some JBL speaker replacements for the JBL 2500s that I've, I built once before. I'm going to build these again. So this is how they're gonna start. I'll take you along with every step of the process. Again, this is not going to be an instructional video as more of it is documentation for Braden, when he gets these speakers, he'll be able to pass the video on to anyone who ends up with the speakers in the future. So thanks for watching. All right, the next step in the process is to build the panels. And as you can see, as I said in the last clip, that these, panel, these uh, boards were only 24 inches. So I glued them together. It didn't need to be that um, great of a joint because they're gonna be glued again, but they're gonna be glued this way in uh, to build out panels. And one thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to alternate the, uh, the seam there so that it doesn't just look like one long seam. It'll just be kind of uh, back and forth. I'll try and sand it and hide the seam as much as possible, but you have to work with what you got but that will turn into a panel and I have to go make a whole bunch of those right now. All right, after the glue has dried, you have a panel that looks like this. And it's all, you see, uneven. What we're gonna do is run it through the planer which will make it all nice and smooth. So that's the next step in this process. This has to be done with every single panel that's left, right, top, bottom, front, and back. And uh, the tops and bottoms, I'll do one panel like this, and then I'll just cut them up because they don't need to be as wide, and one panel will be enough to create a top and bottom for two speakers. Right now it's gone through the planer. You can see it's all nice and even. I'll do a little bit of sanding on it, but this thing is ready to be one of the panels of the speaker. At this point, I've got 
four sides, uh, right and left of the right and left speakers. And then that piece up there is going to be the top and bottom of both speakers. So I will be cutting the you know four pieces out of that. This is rough uh, dimension. I will square everything up on the jointer. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna use my jointer to get a perfectly flat edge on one side. And then I'll use the table saw to cut the other side to the appropriate size. And then I have to do the length. And because I was using pieces that weren't quite 44 inches, I ended up having to glue pieces together and I didn't want to seem to go right down the middle. So you can see here, I have one piece there. I kind of went back and forth. I just think that'll look better than having one seam down the middle. At least that's the thought. So what I'm gonna have to do is find the midpoint and then I'll uh, do 22 inches on each side of that midpoint to get this to 44 inches, which is the length, rather than just kind of flattening, um, squaring off one end and then just measuring out 44 inches and cutting the other side, uh, that would look, uh, this wouldn't be centered if I did it that way. So that's the process. And uh, once we're done with that, I need to make the front and back and I'll be able, oh, I'll have to build some braces. The plan calls for some braces and then we'll load the components. And what I've done here is I've marked the side here. So when I run it through the jointer, all those markings should be off. That way I'll know that the, um, the jointer touched the entire uh, side to make sure that it's all nice and flat. All right, let's make some sawdust. And this is a side that's been uh, flattened, or what I call square. And I marked it so I know which side to use as a reference. You can see, uh, well, you can't see, but if you trust me, it's very sharp. I mean, uh, can't cut with it, but it's still pretty sharp, which means we got a perfect 90 degree angle uh, on the sides there. All right, once this is, uh, now that this is done, I need to, do the final dimensions and get this on a table saw, get the width set up and then the length, and then we'll put the top, bottom, left and right together and we'll have the frame for the speakers. All right, so everything's been cut now. They're all 44 inches and it looks really nice and uh, square. And these will be the tops and the bottoms. So let's see if I can do this with one hand. It will kind of go something like this and I'll, I'll glue it up and show you. But that's it, uh, we're making progress. So by the end of today, I should have two frames built. All right, so now we've got the glue up going here. We have uh, one more to go after this. And then uh, I need to put in the uh, braces. So I think there's three of them in each one. So it'll help keep it uniform. And uh, there's a little bit of bowing, which it will push it out. Some of that bowing is due to the clamping that I have on there because uh, it's really tight on, on the edges here. So it's pushing it in. And then, um, like I said, I'll put in the braces and we have the front and back yet to do, but this is starting to look actually like some tower speakers. All right, so now we're done and uh, it's another day. We've got the frame of the speakers put together. And you can see how it's nice and long. It's going to, uh, that would actually vibrate. So what we're gonna do is build some braces and according to this design there. So I've got it marked out. I'll get a jigsaw, cut these out and then I'll use that to basically trace the rest of them and then we'll get it loaded up into there. And after that, we'll do the front and backs and we'll get it loaded with the components. We're getting closer. All right, so I have got the braces in. They're all glued up and drying. And as soon as those are done, we'll get this thing loaded up. Well, I guess I gotta do the front and back panels first before I get it loaded up. So I'll start working on those next and I gotta get the components ordered here shortly. The next step in the process is trying to square up the uh, face and the back. And here we'll use this piece of wood here that's straight. If you look, there's gaps 
right here especially oops there we go right there especially and it's you know over here on this side it's actually pretty tight and part of the reason for that is as hard as you try you can never get that exact this side here is a little bit better but still what is the easiest thing to do is run this thing through a uh, sanding process like a belt sander or something however i don't have one of those what i do have is this that's a pizza stone and i've uh, glued down some sandpaper and what i'll do is i'll run the 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 uh, frame on that applying equal pressure and i won't let it roll on when i get to the end i won't keep the pressure on i'll just lift it off kind of like a planer because you don't want to curve the end so let me show you what i'm talking about here uh, i won't be able to do it uh, video at the same time but i'll try to do it with a steel frame so what i'll do is i'll move it to about here and then i'll apply equal pressure and i'll push it through I guess I am doing it with one hand, but not an actual one. So I'll push it to applying pressure. And then when I get to about the end, right about there, I just lift it off. That way I won't do that because that'll end up curving it as well. So this is glued down and then I just scrape it off uh, when I'm done. So I'll show you the after when uh, this process is done. It takes a while to do it this way, but patience is something you need when you're working on speakers like this. All right, and the process is complete. If we come in here, you can see it's pretty flat. Unfortunately, I took a chunk out here with some of this older wood's a little bit brittle, but fortunately this is gonna be the bottom, so it really won't matter that much. And let's see if I can do this. Move over here. You can see it's pretty tight. Of course, I'll be clamping it and uh, gluing it so that'll fill in any little gaps there. We'll get a nice tight seal. So, a little bit of hard work, but it ends up saving you all kinds of time in the end. Otherwise, there's gaps and you end up having to fill it with uh, sawdust and glue. This makes it a lot easier. You get a nice tight seal, clean seal. That's it upside down. And uh, we'll move on. I have the back panels all cut up and flattened and straightened out. So I'll glue those onto the back. I'll show you a picture of that here in a second. Then I'll drill the holes right there on the bottom. Uh, there'll be two holes for vent tubes and then one for the terminal cup. And then we'll get to working on the front panels uh, or front baffles here uh, probably next week. And it's a long process, but we are getting there. As they say, you can never have enough clamps. I wish I actually had more. Uh, the problem is if you clamp in one area it kind of bows out at the other so i needed to put a whole bunch on there to kind of get it all nice and flat there are some uh, areas i'm gonna have to do some sanding to get it all nice and even but it'll look good when i'm done all right that's the next one i've got that all set up and glue it up this is what it looks like when it's done so i got it on there I'll cut the holes down there later. It looks pretty cool. Now I did have an issue here. The wood is a little bit old and brittle. So you'll see here, I got a little bit of a tear out, but I'm gonna round it over and that will pretty much take most of that out. There'll still be a little bit of a divot there, but that's, you know, one of the things working with this wood is you can get away with a lot saying that, oh, that's just the kind of wood it is. The other thing I'm gonna have to do is, let's see if you can see that there, you can see some gaps there you go. You can see some gaps. I have to seal this all up. Otherwise, uh, when, you know, the venting will be uh, incorrect based on all the gaps in here. So what I'm going to do is I will seal the inside of this completely up and you'll still retain the really cool kind of rustic look on the outside, but at least it'll be uh, solid. Uh, it'll be, sorry, airtight. And uh, when I'm done with this, you'll be able to pour water in here and it won't drain out. So I'll do that next and I'll show you what that looks like. But uh, there it is, it's looking really good. All right, now that uh, we've got the backs on, and I, I think I showed you once before, there are some holes in here, there's another one there. And I need to seal it so that it's airtight and the only way for any air to get out will be stuff that goes through the vent tubes. I think the vent tube's gonna go right about here. 
what I'm using to seal it is there's a bunch of people who told me different ways to do it and, and they're all good. But this is the simplest for me. I use this Gorilla Tape. It's super strong. And it actually, here, here's one that I've already done. You can see it actually, uh, I believe, adds a little bit of, to the rigidity. And on top of that is gonna go the foam, the acoustic foam anyway. So that's not even going to be really exposed to the sound waves. It's just going to be what the acoustic foam gets attached to, but it is completely sealed and no air will get in and out. And this way I'm able to retain this really cool wormy look. And I think that adds quite a bit to the actual look of the speakers themselves. And uh, so it makes them function properly. And as I said, I was gonna use CSS audio parts. Here is everything that comes in the kit. Foam, vent tubes, the tweeters, the woofers, terminal cups, and then this is the crossover. And you can see they've got everything labeled really nicely so you know where to put the parts. And then on the back, it shows you how to solder everything. So you connect the D to the D, A to A, B, B, so on and so forth. And then eventually you come out and you'll have what goes out to your tweeter. This is your input from your terminal cups, and then this is going out to the woofer. And we got two woofers, and I believe they are going to be done in parallel. But I'll check with them, uh, and uh, if it's other than parallel, I'll come back on and say it. And that's what it looks like with everything mounted and zip-tied and um, that'll help keep it in place so that it doesn't rattle around when you're playing music. Next up is to solder the back and I'll show you that and uh, pre-warned uh, my solder skills aren't great. It will work but it may not look pretty. All right I've completed the crossover and I have the woofer that will go out to two different woofers in each cabinet input and tweeter. Let's take a look at the soldering job. I'm not best at soldering but these are all solid connections so you go FF there and you see it loops over to there at the at that piece of wire and then H comes in from here and go to those two connections and then E and you got that run over there running over to G and these are I guess G stands for ground is all I can guess but maybe not anyway so that's what it looks like they're very solid the connections Again, they're not pretty, but they work. So we'll get these before, obviously, I connect up the uh, cabinet. I will connect them up to the speakers and just make sure that they do at least make noise. And uh, if I have any surprises, I'd rather do it now while I have everything out of the cabinet. Next thing in the process is to cut out some holes here. Uh, these two here are going to be for the vent tubes and this one's gonna be for the terminal cup. The plans call for where to place the center of the hole and what the diameter is. And then you're gonna need something to cut that hole. You could, on these you could actually use a jigsaw if you're really good with it because it, it's going to be covered up by the terminal cup and the vent tubes. But I like having the holes as perfect as possible. And I use my router and a straight bit. And then I've got a circle jig on here. It's hard to tell. It's made by Jasper. And what you see there are gradations. So for instance, if you want a two inch hole, you put a, a pin here at the two inch and then you put it uh, in this point right here where it's, uh, I've cut a one eighth inch diameter. Um, I've drilled a hole there. And I'll show you in a second what that is. But this thing goes all the way up to 18 inches. And so let's go, let's first of all put the bit in there. It's a straight bit, quarter inch. And then we will look at the plan and get make sure we verify that the circle that we drew there is indeed the circle size that we want. Measure, what is it? Uh, measure twice, cut once. That's what we're gonna do here. According to the plan, we're gonna have a three inch diameter 
terminal cup and we're gonna have a two and 13 30 seconds diameter vent tube. In 13 30 seconds, I don't have a 13 30 second. Uh, so if we were to go into 16, that would be seven and, sorry, six and a half sixteenths. So we're gonna take that up to seven sixteenths. So it'll be slightly bigger by about a sixteenth, but that's gonna be okay for this uh, situation here. So let me put the pin in the appropriate spot. We'll do the top one first. That will require a one and a half inch radius, three inch diameter. So it's a straight bit. I've got that in there, quarter inch. I've got the pin right here at 3.0 inches. Now what we'll do is we'll put that right there in that hole and then we'll put the router down and make sure that it is indeed uh, right on that line. And then we'll go ahead and start cutting the hole. And there you can see the router is right there on the line that we drew. So we are now able to cut our hole. We'll put power on that and get to cutting. And that is a perfect hole. All right, one down. We got five more to go. Three holes cut. Now what we'll do is we'll go get the pieces and we'll put them in there, make sure everything fits right. And then uh, we'll move on. All right, you can see everything fits in there nicely, but there is a bit of an issue. I believe I should have gone down a 16th instead of up a 16th because you can kind of see there, there's a little bit of a gap and I could position these so that I can minimize that and then I just need to be really careful uh, when I screw those in to make sure that I get a, the screw going through the wood. It looks like I have enough to where I can do that. But for the next one, I'm gonna go down a 16th and instead of up and I think we'll be fine. And the second one turned out really good. The, there was no difference done in the terminal cup there. But on the vent tubes, you can see where I have four perfect uh, wood connections to where I can screw in the um, vent tubes. And as I said in the previous segment, I'll just have to be really careful when I put in the other ones and I should be fine. The next thing I needed to do is connect up all the wires. And what you'll see there is I've got them soldered together and then shrink wrapped. The kit comes with all the wire that you need. Uh, so the, um, the input is the longest wire. That kind of is gonna run all the way down to here. And then we'll connect it up to the terminal cups down there. And we've got a one woofer that's gonna go in here and one woofer that's gonna go here. And then a tweeter is also gonna go in there. So we'll just connect these up. Uh, these also are soldered in, so they're crimped on and then I soldered them on, just making sure uh, that no chance of them coming loose. And next I will, um, so I'm gonna take this and I'm going to mount it right there on the, this will be on the back wall and I'll do it in the vertical orientation and uh, I'll screw those in so they won't move or anything. And if we ever need to either swap it out or replace it, we can remove the woofer that's gonna be right here. We can just remove it, reach our hands down there, unscrew it, pull it out. And um, of course you can just pull those off of all the terminals. And then down here, what you'll have to do is the terminal cup connects with screws. So you'll have to pop that off and then disconnect the connector there and then just pull the wire up. So that's it. And um, once that is done, Let's come over here. I haven't really done anything with this since I've glued it together and planed it. I will get it to the appropriate size and then I'll cut the holes and then put it on to the front and then we'll have music playing. And the next step in the process is adding this 
sound deadening material. It will help cancel out any reflections from the drivers that are coming off the back and the sides. You just cut it to the size and then you attach it with, uh, I'm using this material, the 3M uh, glue. Uh, some of them actually come with a peel off on the back. You can just peel it and stick it on. This one, you just need to add your own adhesive. And uh, on the top here, I ended up, when I cut this, I put it too close to the top here. And so I couldn't wedge another piece in there. I guess I could have put uh, just one from here to here, but I just wanted it to cover the entire thing. So I ended up using some polyfill that I have. And a lot of people just use polyfill for this exact same purpose. This kit uses this egg crate material. Uh, I guess you can use whatever you choose, but for this design, uh, I'm using what the company chose to send. And I think just this part up here is not going to hurt much. And that's it. We'll get the other one done. And then uh, the inside will be finished. Then we'll just put the front baffle on and put the drivers in. We'll actually we'll have to finish the outside with uh, sanding, a lot of sanding, and then a lot of uh, finish as well. So it's a long process. Everything's loaded. And there, that's a special uh, type of, um, I guess, padding or foam or something that uh, it's a denim material is what I was told. And it's there to eliminate a standing wave that's part of this design. So I put it there where I was told to. And then I ran out of the egg crate and I didn't think it was that important as further down I went, but I did put polyfill. And that's it. Next up is to cut a hole for the tweeter and uh, we'll pull the router back out with the circle jig. And uh, the difference between this and the terminal cup or the vent tubes is we need to have this little ridge for the tweeter to sit on. You can see the tweeter here, that's about four millimeters thickness. So this outer circle here is four millimeters uh, deep. And then we do a through hole for the rest of the way. We'll be able to put the tweeter in there. And of course, we'll get that all nice and centered before we do that and get the, the screws aligned so they look good. And also I have some gasket material that I'll put on the outside there that'll help seal in any gaps that you see. The hole was cut a little bit bigger because I find it easier to deal with the hole that's a little bit bigger than a little bit smaller. Uh, you can fill it with this gasket material where if it's too small, it's really hard to sand it out to maintain a nice perfect round shape. So I purposely go a little bit bigger. And then what we'll have to do is cut the driver holes and attach this to the body of the speaker. And we're getting close. I have my first front panel done. And I've got the parts put in there. They're not screwed down, nor is the front baffle glued down. I'm just going to connect an amplifier up to it to make sure that they actually make noise before I seal everything up. Because if there's an issue, it's much easier to deal with when I have complete access versus having to go through one of the driver holes. And that's it. So it's looking really good. Can't wait till these things are done. So when I tested the audio, I got nothing. I was really disappointed. And I quick email to the guys at CSS and they said one of the common mistakes, uh, the, the problem was I had nothing coming out of the woofers, had something coming out of the tweeter. They said one of the common issues is that you don't connect the Gs. So here's the G and there's G over there and I never connected them for whatever reason. It just didn't cross my mind. So I, this was just a temporary jumper and it worked. So I'm going to actually solder in a proper connection between the points and we will be good to go. So the CSS audio guys, really quick in responding, uh, really happy working with them. Front baffles are cut and we got the first one being glued. And it's just a matter of getting a lot of clamps on there. I actually wish I had more, but uh, that'll work. Once that's done, we'll get it all sanded. 
we'll round over the edges and then we have to do the finish and then once the finish is done we'll get everything loaded in there we'll get these things connected up and they'll be making beautiful music in Braden's house all right so everything is in place and I've got the holes taped up so none, when I do the sanding, none of the sawdust gets inside there. And the last thing is I have to fill some gaps. Some of this wood was uh, brittle. And uh, so you see a little chunk right there. And what I've done is I've sanded it with the, my orbital sander here and I didn't use the dust collection. I'm capturing everything inside that little bag. And what I'll do is I'll make a little bit of um, a wood filler, which is just simply glue and a lot of that sawdust. And then I'll use a putty knife and I'll just kind of spackle it in. And then once that's done, I'll, we'll sand it, um, we'll round over the edges and then we'll have to sand it all the way. I think we're gonna go all the way up to a thousand grit and make it nice and smooth and then get a nice finish on there. And of course, to get everything all loaded up. And that is where we're at today. All right, let's see if I can do this one hand. So I just take some of the uh, sawdust and we'll just pour it out here in my little makeshift bowl. Okay, there's more if I need it. Sorry for the shakiness. Then I take some glue and I just mix in the glue. Maybe a little more. And then we'll take my little putty knife here and we'll mix that all together and create, it's hard to do with one hand, but you get the idea. We'll create this, I'll mix this off camera and then I'll show you how I apply it. All right, so we got it, it's kind of like a, a putty and then we'll take it and we'll just start filling in the holes. You just kind of get it in there really good. And then what you'll want to do is um definitely scrape off all the excess so it's it saves on the sanding so we'll show you what it looks like when i got all these holes filled so that's what it looks like when you put the fill in there now on this side here i didn't get perfect on it because one it's going to be rounded over a lot of that's just going to disappear and uh, you won't even notice it but over here you can see it's filled in there was a small gap all these gaps were cosmetic everything was sealed it was just the wood is a little bit old and as i work with it it's a little bit brittle and some little pieces will come off but uh, as i said it's completely sealed and this will once we get it sanded and oiled you won't even know that this was done and the next phase is to round over the edges and with that i'm going to use this router and I've got a round over bit on the end. So what you do is you just kind of pull it up against here and then you just run down the sides. So we'll do that around all, all sides. There's a lot of sides to do that too. And then after that, we'll sand it down and we'll fix any imperfections that are in the wood. There's been some issues with some clamping that caused some dents in the wood, but the rounding over and then sanding, we'll get rid of those. And then we'll put our oil finish on there and get the components loaded. Earlier in this video, I showed you that I had this issue that uh, rounding over and sanding is gonna take care of. So let's see what just rounding it over does. And then of course we'll do the sanding and hopefully this will just disappear or be extremely difficult to notice. And there it is, rounding over, got rid of that issue, and we will sand it, of course, and this will become completely invisible. And, that, and there they are side by side. You can see the round over on this one here, and you can see just a straight 90 degrees. The round over gives it a little bit nicer finish. Of course, it'll all be sanded, all those burn marks will be sanded off, and uh, just, I think, adds a nicer touch to the speakers themselves. All right, we've got this sanded to 1000 grit. It's super smooth. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on some Danish oil for the finish. So you'll see this wood transform. It's amazing what this stuff does. So we'll pour a little bit there and then we'll just wipe it in. And you can see how it just transforms this thing. It's amazing. 
So I'm gonna put two coats of this on here. We'll buff it in between and then she'll be ready to load. All right, so we're at the last stage. We are gonna load components. Everything's done, it's all been finished. Looks beautiful, looks way better in person than it does on this video, but we'll get this thing loaded and make a music shortly. For the final reveal, I brought them upstairs into my media room and uh, this is where I'll be doing some audio through them with a better microphone to capture the audio as best that I can. It's still not going to be the same as being in the same room, but it will be better than using the microphone on this camera. It turned out beautiful and what I find amazing is that this wood was in a house in West Virginia that was built in the late 1800s and Lucas Millworks tore the house down and processed the wood and I bought it and turned it into this. The uh, front, the red on the front is Paduk, that's an African hardwood I believe. I added that just for a little bit of style and uh, one of my posts on Instagram, somebody made a comment that said it looks like a vintage surfboard. There's also, I have carpet spikes on the bottom of these and I'll show you a picture of those right here to help isolate it from the floor. And uh, they turned out, I just can't get over how good these turned out look and sound. And so why don't we run some audio through here? It will be copyright free music, so it'll be something that you haven't heard before, but at least it will give you an indication of what these speakers are capable, as best that we can here with the microphones that we have. And uh, the last thing we're gonna show you are the speakers set up in Braden's house, and that will complete the video.
And we've got the speakers placed in Brayden's, I guess, what do you call this? Your media room? Your My music office. room? Brayden's office. So this is it. Brayden's not on camera. He doesn't want to be on camera. So that's it. Final resting place for these for a while. And thanks for following along on this uh, video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you get a chance, please like and subscribe. And we will see you on the next one.